Okay, Matt, tell me a bit about yourself. Okay, um, so I trained as an osteopath and naturopath in the 1990s. Uh, I went on to do a master's degree in osteopathy uh, at the end of the 1990s. Um, and then did the Czech training, which is Corrective Holistic Exercise Kinesiology, um, uh, with the Czech Institute, who are based in San Diego. And um, that really kind of, I felt, filled in a number of the gaps that the osteopathy was missing and uh, allowed me to move into the field of uh, rehabilitation and performance conditioning at the kind of more elite end, which is what I always wanted to achieve. So, um, so that was uh, the initial part of my career. and and. Really, that opened the opportunity for me to um, get involved with the Vibram Five Fingers um, because I was teaching a course in New York in 2006, and one of the students walked in wearing a pair of Five Fingers, and they'd just been released at that point in the US. Okay. They still weren't really in Europe, um, and Vibram hadn't really recognised at that point the benefits of, of the Vibram Five Fingers from a rehabilitation point of view or from a conditioning point of view. Yeah. They mainly created them for sort of sailing and walking and this kind of thing. Um, so I was one of the, the first people uh, to be uh, feeding back to them to say, you know, there's more to this than, than just a sailing shoe. And, um, and so uh, from that, uh, it turned out they didn't have a distributor in the UK and they hadn't really realised that this medical market could be a big market. And so we ended up becoming the distributor to the UK in 2007. Um, and so that's kind of my career through to now, while well, I'm still doing both of those things, uh, distributing and, uh, and practicing as well. Right. So, okay. Yeah. So what were your reasons for setting up the Barefoot Connections Conference? Okay. Um, well, we wanted to try and engender a bit more of a sense of community amongst the, the Barefoot community. Um, so that, that was one reason why we called it sort of Barefoot Connections. But we also wanted to um, highlight the connections between evolution uh, which of course the natural, natural History Museum is the perfect kind of location for that um, and the requirement for performance in evolution you know you have to be able to survive in your environment uh, and so um, uh, barefoot of course was how we did that and uh, that was carried right the way through time through to even as far as the ancient Olympic Games where everything was done barefoot and uh, now we're just moving into 2012 with the, the London uh, Olympic Games and uh, it feels like things have almost come full circle because people are now again recognising the benefits of barefoot and a lot of people are training barefoot even yeah. though because of sponsorships you'll, you won't see too many barefoot athletes out there um, but, uh, but you'll be guaranteed that a large percentage of those athletes will have been doing barefoot conditioning okay. as part of their training. So. Okay. Um, and you have quite a few speakers lined up for the yeah. conference, what do you plan to talk about yourself? Um, I plan to really talk about uh, barefoot, of course, in the context of um, uh, evolution from looking at um, how every animal has uh, to exploit an energetic niche. And um, uh, as human beings, I think the, the niche that we've exploited is uh, this capability to, to run uh, or to outrun any other animal. And yeah. that's how we've managed to uh, hunt out prey and to gather uh, across quite large territories uh, and so on. So. Um, What's allowed us to do that is bipedalism, and um, bipedalism being more efficient than any other form of locomoting over the land. Uh, and of course being barefoot during bipedalism has been shown through the research, uh, which is a little surprise that it's more efficient than, than moving with shoes on. So, um, so I'm really going to be talking about that and going into a bit more detail, more specifically about sort of movement patterns and how you require a certain level of neurological development for basic movement patterns mm -hmm. and more and more complex movement patterns require more and more complex kind of uh, computational software if you like so ultimately that computer gets bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, eventually you get the sort of flowering of consciousness and that's uh, where I'll be sort of finishing my talk is talking about Excellent. consciousness. Look forward to it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.